Okay, so I just did this 50 minute long video without realizing I had the microphone off. So I'm just going to do the sound over it. It's a very important feature to understand the unit circle and the XY coordinates and how to graph a new graph called the sine curve or the cos curve. And it starts by understanding the basics of the right angle triangle and going back to Sokotoa. And in Sokotoa, uh, I wonder if I can play this back at twice the speed because I know I took a long time. In Sokotoa, it was always things like sine is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. But when the radius units, when the hypotenuse is 1, opposite over 1 is always just going to be opposite. So for Sokotoa, sine angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. But when the hypotenuse is the unit circle, it's always 1. Therefore, we discover that sine angle is equal just to the opposite side of this triangle. But the opposite side of this triangle is the y coordinate. It's always going to be the y-coordinate of where it meets because we start at origin. We start at the x-axis and the y-coordinate. So you get sine angles just equal to y. And the cos angle is always equal in a, in a right angle triangle to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is 1. So we get the cos angle is equal to the adjacent, but the adjacent is also just the x-coordinate of this. So you discover that cos angle is equal to x. So no matter what, as we go around the unit circle, the x is going to be the cosine and the y is going to be the sine. That's the point of this. I'm just going to jump ahead. So if you map out, um, if you map out the uh, coordinates around the circle, the angle starting with zero and going up 30 degrees, and then you find the sine value, you get a curve like this, in which the x-axis is the angle, and the y-axis ranges from minus one to one, which is the sine value of any angle. And it goes from zero to one because the unit circle, the maximum radius you ever get or sorry, minus 1 to 1, the maximum radius you ever get goes as high as 1, or is down as low as minus 1, which is why the sine of any value can never be higher than 1 or lower than minus 1 in a unit circle. This is a very important concept to learn, that the sine graph uh, angle, where the y-axis is the sine value, will look like this. It also has a lot of real-world applications. You'll be using this in electrical engineering, electricity, electricians use it, uh, sine curves and trig is one of the few that has almost immediate real-world applications. It's also how light behaves. Light behaves in a wave. Sound behaves in a wave. Things that have a cycle, like a wheel, behave like this. Springs, uh, tides behave in a, si in a sine wave. So you get to you have to sh should start to learn what the sine curve looks like, and it repeats forever because the circle can go on and forever. But we focus on zero to two pi, which is one period. And you can see it repeats over and over and over again. Let's just jump. We're also going to learn that um, if you look at the values, so let's, I think I was just trying to show that the max is 1, and if you go up to 1, boy, I never even came close to it. Let's see. Let's just jump. There we go. If you go up to 1, it only hits the sine curve once. Other spots of the sine curve, it hits twice, and that's because the value of sine is positive in two different quadrants, 1 and 2. And then as we go down into the minus area, you discover, oh, there's two different values in the minus area in quadrants 3 and 4. Interestingly enough, at the very bottom and the very top, there's only one value. There's only one spot where sine is minus 1, and that's at 270 degrees, or 3 pi over 2. And there's only one spot where it's maximum 1, which is pi over 2, or 90 degrees. Interestingly, in the very middle, there are three spots where y is 0. And that is, um, I don't know what I'm doing there. And that is at 0 degrees, pi degrees, and 2 pi degrees. Here I'm just showing transformations, what happens when we add a number at the end. I shouldn't bother because it's covered in more depth later on. But I'm just showing you that you can use Desmos to study these things and what happens with various transformations. And you'll learn that a coast curve is simply a sine curve that's 90 degrees shifted to the left or right. So there's a connection between sine and cos 90 degrees and we'll learn that from the right angle triangle as well and why that makes sense. Okay, I'm just going to fast forward because a lot of this beginning one was garbage. This is the cos curve. Looks like a bird flapping its wings as opposed to the sine curve which looks like two waves. It starts at the maximum value one. Here's the sine curve against the cos curve and I'm just showing the same period. And you'll learn that they're out of sync by 90 degrees, but they're essentially the same curve. 
the max value of Coase curve starts right away at 1. It goes down to the minimum of minus 1 and then backs up to positive 1 and only cuts, it, cuts the axis twice as opposed to the sine curve, which cuts it three times. And you, it's important to learn the key points that they're divided up into a quarter. It goes 0, pi over 2, 90 degrees, pi, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, which is 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. And you can always figure out a, a, a sine curve based on its, uh, if, even if you just have a quarter of it. And that the distance from max to max is always the period, or min to min. And then they go over the basics. The period's always 2 pi, that the axis is at y is equal to 0, that the amplitude is 1, the minimum value, or the maximum value is 1, and the minimum minus 1, and then it gives you the overall range. Uh, and where it's important to know where those five main points on a sine curve and cosine curve are, where the intercepts are, where the max values are, etc. And then it goes into 6.4 which is transformations. Oh yeah, and here's where you learn tangent is equal to sine over cos because tangent uh, is equal to opposite over adjacent, but opposite is the same as the y value, which we discovered was the same as the sine value. Jason's the same as the x value, which we discovered is the same as the cos value, which is why tangent is equal to sine divided by cos. But if also from Pythagoras theorem, you learn that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Well, hypotenuse squared is one. And since uh, A is sine and B is cos, that means cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. That's another identity that you should learn and memorize. So sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. This is the transformations that we're getting into. And we discover that A up front here is the amplitude, uh, and D over here is always the axis. And those are the two key points that you want to remember. B affects the period, but it affects it in an inverse way. Anything that affects X transformations does it inverse of what you expect it to. And C transforms it left or right. And actually the plus means left and a negative would mean right. Yeah, and I'm just sort of showing you what happens when we change the axis, which is D. So D is always going to tell you what the axis is. And A is always going to tell you what the amplitude is. And those are the e Y transformations are the easiest ones to spot. X transformations take a little bit more work. And here I'm affecting the period, which is the value in front of x. And then it has the opposite effect of what you would expect it to do. Then we're going to get into, oh, a specific graph. So looking at this graph, can we spot the amplitude? Well, the amplitude is right in front here. It's 3. So you always want to spot the y transformations first because they're the easiest ones to map out. The 3 is the amplitude and the minus 1 is the axis, which means I can determine the max value points by taking the axis and adding the amplitude, which would be 2, and taking the axis and subtracting the amplitude, which would be minus 3, which means the max value goes from 2 to minus 3. Oh, let's see, 2 to minus, subtract 3, minus 4. So it goes as high as 2 and as low as minus 4. And then I'm just teaching you how to, if, to change the y transformations. You would multiply all your y. Your, you would memorize your five key points on the sine curve. And to change all the y's, you multiply them by 3 and then subtract 1. And then for the x values, you'd think that you would multiply by 2 and add pi over 6. But in reality, you divide by 2 and subtract pi over 6. You, you do the opposite. I'm not going to get into this one because it's kind of convoluted. Then I go into a specific spring one. Now, what's interesting about the spring one is they have a 2 pi in front of the x. And the 2 pi transforms the period from 2 pi to just seconds. But it's important to note that that transformation in the bracket is not correct and that we're looking at three cycles from 0 to 3 seconds. Right away, we can see the amplitude is 10 and the y-axis is 15. It's the internal transformation that's always tricky, and they often try to trick you by giving an incorrect x transformation. I factored out the wrong thing here. I factored out 2. I should have factored out 2 pi from both of them. I think I get it right the next time. There we go. Yeah, there we go. I factored out 2 pi. I don't know why I have a pi there. That should be x. And when I factor out uh, 2 pi, I get x plus 3 and a quarter. That pi should be x right there. Don't know what I'm doing here. Come on, notice it, notice it. Yeah, there, I fix it right here, coming up. 
There we go. Get in there and change that to an X. There. Now I can see it. And now I have to go closer and try to figure out. There we go. It's that little period there. And then I just have to change the X values to 0 to 3 to see it. And there we go. We can see that the max value is indeed going up as high as 25 and as low as uh, 5. And that the axis is indeed y is equal to 15. And it's been transformed 3 quarters of a second to the left. And that 2 pi transforms it from 2 pi period to 1 second. And I go into better explanation after this. This is just using Desmos to show the graph and how those numbers are affecting it. Then in the summary, it explains the key transformations to a sine curve. And again, I'm going to go into better. This chapter is really good and very important. So it's asking us, state the period, amplitude, horizontal translation, and equation of the axis for each of these. When we look at 0 0.5, the x transformations in the middle, it's easier to focus on the y transformation. That 0.5 over here immediately affects the amplitude. So right away, I can say the amplitude is going to be 0.5. Now, I'm trying to show you what happens to the normal coast, and here I'm changing the amplitude down to 0.5, so that it only goes as high as 0.5 and as low as minus 0.5. There's no uh, axis change, because there's no number up here. Then when you look at the 4, what you have to do is take 2 pi, and instead of multiplying it by 4, you have to divide it by 4 to see what happens to the amplitude. Well, 2 pi divided by 4 becomes pi over 2, which means, sorry, the period, which means the entire period goes from 2 pi to pi over 2. So it shrinks from 360 degrees to 90 degrees, or, if you want, it's compressed by a factor of 4. Okay, and then, then we go on to this next one, which shows that there's no amplitude adjustment. The amplitude's 1, but the 3 over here shows that the axis is way up at y is equal to 3, which means the max value will be 4 and the min value will be 2. This pi over 4 simply says the only transformation on the x-axis, or on the x-values, is pi over 4 to the right, or 45 degrees to the right. The second one, the 2 in front, tells you the amplitude, and the minus 1 tells you the axis. The 3 simply says we're going to be dividing... 2 pi by 3, so it's going to shrink it from 2 pi down to 2 pi over 3. There's the y, the axis is going to be y is equal to minus 3. The maximum value, therefore, is the axis plus the amplitude and the axis minus the amplitude, which will tell you it goes as high as 1 and as low as minus 3. In this one, the amplitude is going to be the phi, the axis is going to be minus 2. But the transformation for x is incorrect. You have to factor out minus 2, which means divide everything by minus 2. When you divide pi over 3 by minus 2, you get minus pi over 6, which means this transformation wasn't clear at all. It's actually going to the right pi over 6, not to the left pi over 3. So it's going to the right by 30 degrees. And the minus simply means there's a reflection in the y-axis. But the 2 is more important. The amplitude's still 2. The... Um, axis is y is equal to minus 2. Um, the horizontal translation is pi over 6 to the right. And that's where they always try to mess you up, is showing you the incorrect horizontal translation. I think I'm just summarizing it there. Identify the key characteristics of this graph. Well, the minus in front of minus 2 tells me there's a reflection in the x-axis, so it's a cos curve. Instead of going up starting up it's going to start at the bottom but let's do the x transformation correctly i have to divide everything in there by four to factor out the four which means the four will go in front and i'm left with x plus pi over four which means the actual x transformation is pi over four to the left and the four means that the period will be divided by four or two pi divided by four which is pi over two which means the period goes from two pi to pi over two which is compression of uh, 4. So it's, it goes from 360 degrees to 90. But that's the correct x transformation. Um, the minus 2 still tells me that the amplitude is 2, but it's going to start at the bottom instead of the top. Go ahead and use your graphing calculator for it. And with the y-axis at 4, it means we're going to go down as low as 2 and as high as 6. So the max is going to be 6 and the low is going to be 2.
think I ramble on here quite a bit. Yeah, and then I show you in the graph. You can see that the y, the axis is indeed y is equal to 4. That the coast curve does indeed start at the bottom instead of the top. It starts right over here at the bottom. You'd think it starts at the top normally, but because it's been shifted pi over 4. To the left, it's actually starting right there. Let's see if I put in the actual axis. Yeah, so I put in the, the max, y is equal to 6, the axis, y is equal to 4, and the min, y is equal to 2. That's simply always going to be the axis plus the amplitude and the axis minus the amplitude to figure out max and y, max and min values. And you can see that it does indeed start over here at pi over 4. The period is easy to measure from minimum to minimum. We can see the period is indeed pi over 2 as expected. Here they want us to reverse. They're going to give us the information. I strongly suggest you start with the Y transformations first. So that 25 amplitude tells me we're talking about Y is equal to 25 sine. Skip the X for now. And go straight to the Y. They tell me the axis is minus 4, so I can slap in a minus 4 over there. This tells me the max value is going to be 21 and the min value is going to be minus 29. But how to do a transformation of turning the period into a period of pi? Well, the normal period is 2 pi. So how do you turn 2 pi into pi? It's quite obvious that to turn 2 pi into pi, you have to divide 2 pi by 2. However, the x transformations are always the opposite. So instead of dividing it by 2, like you would think, what you actually do is you multiply it by 2 because x transformations are the inverse of what you expect. By putting the 2 in here, we will effectively change the period from 2 pi to pi. And that's the key thing, is to understand your x transformations. The y transformations are very simple. The axis is minus 4, the amplitude is 25, so the max value is uh, 21, the min value is minus 29. And the period's 1. I can't remember if I graphed this out or not. I don't think so. In this next one, you get y, they tell us the amplitude's 2 over 5, and the axis is 1 15. So right away, I put a 1 15th over here and 2 over 5 in front. The question is, how do we create a period of 10? Oh yeah, that's just showing what the max and the min values. You take the axis and you add the amplitude and then you subtract the amplitude, which I don't think I bother to do. Oh, I do bother to do it. So the max is 7 over 15 and the min is minus 5 over 15. But how do you turn 2 pi into the number 10? Well, here's the simplest way to get rid of 2 pi. Simply always divide by 2 pi. And then multiply by the thing you want which is 10. However, the x, and let's get rid of this original 2 pi, which is the original period. So it tells me I need to multiply by 10 and divide by 2 pi. However, x values do the opposite. So what you actually have to put by the x is 2 pi at the top divided by 10 at the bottom. And this will change your period from 2 pi. Essentially, it gets rid of the, oh, and I've simplified 2 pi over 10 into pi over 5. That's the complicated part. You would never know that pi over 5 turns your period into uh, from 2 pi into the number 10. This is how they use coast curves to transform them into real life uh, applications like something that would take 10 hours or 10 minutes, like a tide. Tides take about, I think, every 22 hours. They don't quite match 24 hours. Um, so to turn 2 pi into 10, you have to divide by 2 pi and multiply by 10. But again, because x does the inverse, you actually multiply by 2 pi and divide by 10. So you simply reverse the fraction or inverse the fraction that you think will work. And then you simplify. You take 2 divided, two pi divided by 2 and 10 divided by 2. And then I believe I put it in the graph to indeed show, just with the transformation of pi over 5, to indeed show that if I change it to numerical, it goes from 0 to 10. So by putting pi over 5 in front of x, I do indeed change the period from 2 pi to 10. The halfway point is 5, the quarter way point is 2.5, 3 quarters 7.5, and the finish is 10. Very handy method. Just divide by 2 pi and multiply by the number that you, the period that you want to transfer, form any 2 pi period into whatever you want. So again, divide by 2 pi, multiply by the uh, period you want, and then just flip the fraction. And you can see I pull up the tidal waves of Bay of Fundy to show how they're applied. And look at that. There's a sine curve for, um, for, for tides. 
and this is slightly off at the bottoms you'll see and that's because of lunar and solar gravitational poles and other factors however you can model it perfectly with a sine curve um it's and really i'm just showing you what it, it looks exactly like a sine curve then they're asking us to um, do this last one which they tell us has an amplitude of 80 and a period of 6 pi and an axis of nine, minus 9 over 10. So I put an 80 in front, minus 9 over 10. But how do I turn 2 pi into 6 pi? I have to multiply by 3. However, we actually do the opposite for the x-axis. So if I want to multiply by 3, I actually slam a one-third in front of that x. And I just go to show that if I put a third in front of this x, the period is indeed 6 pi right there just by putting, or x over 3, just by putting a third in front of the x, I, I multiply the period by 3. And finally, this last one, they tell me that there's a period of a half. Oh, I'm just showing you how to turn it into 20. This last one, they tell me there's a period of a half. Um, the amplitude's 11, and the equation I have axis is 0. So I simply do y is equal to 11 sine, and I don't know what I'm putting in front of the x yet. But since the axis is zero, I don't add anything to the end. So how do I turn a 2 pi into the number a half or 0 0.5? Let's use a half. Well, like I said, start by dividing by 2 pi to get rid of the 2 pi. And then multiply by the thing you want, which is a half, 1 over 2. And then just ignore this pi here because it's part of the original period. So I discover that I have to multiply by 1 over... 4 pi. However, everything's the reverse. So I actually have to multiply not by 1 over 4 pi, but by 4 pi. And then I go ahead and show you in the graph, if I change this to 4 pi. Oh yeah, I make it 0 to a half. If I change this to 4 pi in front of the x, I show you that indeed I get up here, and I have to change the numerical values. There we go. That I indeed get a graph that goes from 0 to 0.5 as I wished by putting a 4 pi in front of the x. And then this one's asking us to look at tables of value and figure out the equation from it. Well, the first thing you want to look at is the max and the min. And the axis, well, it's clear here that the axis is 0. So I'm not going to add anything to the end. But the 18 is an amplitude going to 0. You can always tell the amplitude by taking the max value and subtracting the axis, which is 0 which means we're dealing with y is equal to 18 sine x. Great, but what's the, amp what's the period? Well, if I look carefully, the graph goes to the max value, comes back to the axis, goes down to the min value, comes back to the axis, and completes a period in 2 pi. But you can also measure from the max value to the max value or from any zero to the other point and you can see uh, and double it and you can see that oh yeah if you go from max value to max to min value you'd have to double it it's clear that this period is 2 pi this one is, is has seems to have an axis of minus 2 a max value of 4 and a min value of minus 8 to figure that out how do i go from minus 2 to 4 it's plus 6 how do i go to, from minus 2 to minus 8 it's minus 6 so that means I have an amplitude here of 6. So anytime you want to figure out your amplitude, take your max value and subtract your axis number. 4 minus minus 2 becomes 4 plus 2, which is 6. So that means my amplitude is 6. Then if I look from min value, yeah, it's saying 6. So I get 6 sine. And then minus 2 is definitely my axis because I can see that middle point is minus 2. What do I, here's where I have to say, okay, what's my period? Well, my period's 4 pi. I see I go from start to uh, max, to start, to min, to max. Well, my period is 4 pi. That means I normally would multiply my 2 pi period by 2, except everything's the reverse for x, so I divide it or multiply it by a half. So that's how I transform 1 period into 2, two pi into 4 pi. Oh, here I'm showing you how you figure out your min and your max values, and that's the next one, which shows a 4, then a 9, and then a 4 and a 9. They don't show you the axis over here. So we have a min, 
of 4 and a max of 9. Well, to figure out axis, you add them together, 9 plus 4, and divide by 2. 9 plus 4 is 13, divided by 2 is 6.5, so the axis is 6.5. To figure out the amplitude, take max and subtract the axis. 9 minus 6.5 is 2.5, which means we're talking about an amplitude of 2.5 and an axis of 6.5. Oh, so here's the formula. Max plus min divided by 2 gives you your axis. And then max minus axis will give you your amplitude. Or max minus min divided by 2 will give you your amplitude. So we get y is equal to 2.5. And we know the axis here is going to be 6.5. But how do we figure out the transformation on this graph? We'll always go from a min value to a min value. That will tell you the period. So we can see a min value of 4 to this min value of 4 goes from 0 pi to 6 pi, which means our period here is 6 pi. Any min to min or max to max will tell you the period. Since the period is 6 pi, that means I have to take 2 pi and multiply it by 3. However, we do the reverse for x, so it means I have to multiply by 1 third to change the period from 2 pi to 6 pi. And then this last one, we can see there's a min of minus 3 and a max of 1. And it's hard to figure out what's going on. Well, again, you take the min plus the max, minus 3 plus 1, which is minus 2, and divide it by 2 to get the axis. So it's y is equal to minus 1 for the axis. Max minus min divided by 2 will give you the amplitude. So if I take 1 minus minus 2, minus minus 3, I get 1 plus 3, which is 4, divided by 2. The amplitude is 2. To get the max, you do max uh, plus min divided by 2. Oh, this is to get the, uh, the axis. So I get 1 plus minus 3, which becomes minus 2. Minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1. So the axis is y is equal to minus 1. So that once you take the max plus the min and divide by 2. And the uh, amplitude is you take the max minus the min and divide by 2. So now we know the axis and we know the amplitude. So we can say, okay, y is equal to minus 1, or y is equal to 2 sine x minus 1. But what's the period? Well, we can see the min goes from minus 3 to minus 3 and 0 to 4 pi, which means the period is double. It's 4 pi, which means I have to multiply x by 2 normally. But since everything's the reverse, I have to multiply it by actually a half. So that half x will turn my period from 2 pi to 4 pi. The 2 will be my amplitude, and the minus 1 will be my new axis. And that's how you go from table of values. And that is questions 1 to 5. Hope that was helpful. I wish the original video was still there, but there you go.